All right, so at this point, we know how to factor out a common factor. We know how to factor by grouping. The next question we had to answer was, then, uh, grouping takes care of everything with four terms. How do we factor something with three terms? So that's what Chapter 6, Section 3 was about. And... No, grouping is with four terms. We're going to do something different with three terms. Now, all of our polynomials with three terms in this section will look like this. It will be some number times a variable squared plus a number times the variable plus a constant. For example, in just a moment, we're going to factor um, 12z squared minus 16z minus 3. So again, this trinomial, 12z squared minus 16z minus 3, does fit the form up here. I've got something times x squared, while here i got 12 times z squared. Up here I've got something times x, well here I've got minus 16 times z. And up here i got a constant plus c, and down here i got minus 3. Okay, so it fits the form. Now... Here's the deal. We are going to use something called the AC method to factor when we have three terms. What the AC method does is it tries to change this from a polynomial that's got three terms into a polynomial that's got four terms. Because if it had four terms, uh, we could do grouping on it. So eventually we're going to do grouping on this problem. We're just not there yet. Okay, to turn it into four terms, here's what happens. The first term stays the same. Leave 12z squared alone. It's going to stay 12z squared. The last term stays the same. Leave negative 3 alone. What we're going to do is we're going to rewrite this negative 16z. Now, you say, how, how are we going to do that? Well, we're going to write it as two numbers that add up to negative 16. And we don't know what combination it's going to be of that. It might be negative 8 and negative 8 would give me negative 16. It might be negative 9 and negative 7. It might be plus 20, uh, I'm sorry, plus 4 and minus 20 would give me negative 16. Could be a whole bunch of different things. Uh, but it's going to be two numbers that add up to negative 16 to make that negative 16z. Here's how we find the combination that we need. We take the a times the c. The a is the 12. The c is the negative 3. We're going to take 12 times negative 3, which is negative 36. So we're going to list down all the factor pairs of negative 36. All the things that I can multiply together and get negative 36. Now for some students, listing down those factor pairs is second nature. They have no problem with that. Other students have trouble figuring out what all the factor pairs are. So here's a way to guarantee that you get all the factor pairs. Take the negative 36 and just think about 36 for a minute and go off to the side and square root it. Okay, sometimes you'll get a decimal, sometimes you won't. This time you don't, you get 6. Whatever that whole number part of that decimal is, that's, where, that's the place where you need to start checking to see if it's a factor. So for instance, we're going to ask if 6 is a factor of negative 36. It is. Okay. I could take 6 times negative 6 and that'd give me negative 36. Now, I'm looking. I don't want to do that yet. Hang on. So let's list all the factor pairs for negative 36. So then I checked 6, now I back it off to 5. And I ask if 5 goes into 36. Well, it doesn't. Then I check 4. Does 4 go into 36? Yes, it does. Nine times. 
So to get negative 36, I could either take 4 times negative 9, or I could take negative 4 times positive 9. Okay, then I'll back it off to 3. And I'll ask, does 3 go into 36? Well, if you take 36 and divide it by 3, you're going to get 12. So 3 times negative 12, or negative 3 times 12, would give you negative 36. And we're going to keep doing this until we get all the way down to 1, and that's going to guarantee that I get every factor pair of negative 36 listed. Okay, so I skip 2 goes into negative 36. Well, 2 goes into 36 18 times. So either 2 and negative 18, or negative 2 and 18. And then, of course, 1's going to go into it. 1 and negative 36, or negative 1 and 36. Okay, so here's the deal. I'm looking for the pair over here that adds up to negative 16 here. That's what I want. Okay. Which ones are you thinking? It's either 2 and negative 18 or negative 2 and 18. Okay, yes. So which one gives you negative 16? It's the one where the 18 has the negative, right? So 2 times 2 and 18. 2 and negative 18 is the combo that we need. So what we're going to do is we're going to rewrite that negative 16z as plus 2z minus 18z. And now it's got four terms, and now it's a grouping problem. So it should be pretty easy to finish now. So let's group the first two, group the last two. Add a 12z squared and 2z, we could factor out a 2z. Which is going to leave 6z and plus 1. Out of negative 18z minus 3, between 18 and 3, I could take out a 3, but do you see here we're going to want to take out a negative 3 so that we can be left with a plus 6z and a plus 1? Negative 3 out of negative 18z leaves 6z, negative 3 out of negative 3 leaves 1. Got our parentheses to be the same. So we're going to have an answer of 6z plus 1 and 2z minus 3. Now we'll be able to shorten up the process a little bit because we don't really have to list all of them over here every time. Really we just got to list them until we find the one that adds up to the to the middle coefficient, in this case the negative 16. So once I found 2 and negative 18 on this problem, there would have been no reason to keep going with your 1 and 30, negative 36, negative 1 and 36. Okay, so let's try to repeat that process uh, again. So let's take a look at 10x squared minus 9x plus 2. So let's ask ourselves if there is a common factor, and on this problem there is not. So the reason that we know to do the AC method is because it has three terms. So we're going to leave the 10x squared alone. We're going to leave the plus 2 alone. We're going to end up rewriting that negative 9. And to do that, we'll take the a times the c. In this case, that's 10 times 2, which is 20. So I need to list the factor pairs of 20. To make sure that I get them all, I can square root 20. Yeah, it's four-point stuff, isn't it? which means the first number I need to check is 4. So, does 4 go into 20? Okay, 5 times. 
So now look, this time we're trying to get a positive 20. So that could either be 4 times 5, or it could be negative 4 times negative 5. Now, the question is, before we go any further with our list here, do either one of those add up to negative 9? It would be negative 4 and negative 5. So we got the combo that we needed right off the bat on this problem. So we'll slip a negative 4x in there and a negative 5x in here. And then we'll do grouping. Because now we got four terms. So group the first two, group the last two, slip a little plus sign in there. You sure good. 2x out of 10x squared minus 4x would leave 5x minus 2. Now, out of 5 and 2, all you could factor out is a 1, but to get the signs to flip, we're going to want to factor out a negative 1 so that we can get this to be 5x minus 2 in here and, and match our other parentheses. Yep, a factor of 5x minus 2 and a factor of 2x minus 1. That's right.